Welcome to the Horse Talk Show. You never heard of a talking horse? With your host, Louisa Barton. I want to be a famous rider. I should like to race. Presented by Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital. Truth is, I help horses with people problems. Now here's the Brit on the bit, Louisa Barton! Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook, and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa, and our television broadcast sponsor. Thank you for joining us on the Horse Talk Show this week, presented by Peterson Smith Equine Hospital in Complete Care. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. Louisa Barton here in the CEP studios in downtown Ocala in the horse capital of the world, Ocala, Marion County, Florida. Got a good lineup for you. Today we're going to start off with some news. Then we're going to have Dr. Kayot joining us. And we have a pre-recorded special on laminitis with him uh, that we'll be able to share with you. You can learn a little bit more about that, something very troubling in the veterinary world. We're also going to have Brenda here from the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch. We're going to talk a little bit about their program. We featured them in the past. We're going to feature them again and see if we can uh, get some foster parents for their horses, which I think would be phenomenal. We've got a pre-recorded and live um, segments with Brenda today. So we hope you enjoy those. And then we're going to have Niall Quirk, who's going to be joining us pre-recorded, um, actually from several months back when we got to chat to him a little bit about the sport of dressage. So we hope you'll enjoy the show. And to start off with some mentions, the United States Polo Association has bought up large in Wellington, acquiring land buildings and other assets to create a permanent center for the sport in the U.S. The acquisition of these assets will include 161 acres from the Wet Polo LLC and operations, including fields, a grandstand, a pavilion, a market grill, a swimming pool, a gym and tennis courts. The property will be called the USPA National Polo Center Wellington, part of the vision to make a permanent center for polo in North America and set standards for excellence in the sport. We're always excited to hear about that. We love our polo here at the Florida Horse Park, so absolutely wonderful. Um, and of course, we'll be doing that at the Hobby Horse Equestrian Games in October on Hobby Horses. So we know that will be a lot of fun. The reading program continues. Gentle Carousel Miniature Therapy Horses are downtown every week on Thursday at the Ocala Downtown Market. Starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, they combine literacy with miniature horses. Their therapy horses come downtown. And last week, they had 87 people join them at the Downtown Market. Um, we think that's an absolutely phenomenal way to bring to life books and the excitement of reading and the importance of literacy by getting to have miniature therapy horses um, that are trained by the way for two years for this program. We think it's, um, it's a really big deal the fact that these little animals are actually potty trained. Um, they actually ask to go to the bathroom only in their horse trailer which is really impressive. Um, so they don't even wear a bag as many horses do that are in therapy programs. Um, these horses actually visit 25,000 sick and dying adults a year at hospitals, rehabilitation centers, and um, retirement homes, and numerous other hope hospice and numerous other places. The horses who've always wanted to, people who've always wanted to have a chance to meet horses, um, actually get this opportunity that are not very well. But in this case, this is their reading program. And as I said, that is at the Ocala Downtown Market. They have a um, a kindness program uh, and they they actually use circus the Appaloosa horse to um, represent they can make a spot when they say something kind to somebody and circus ends up being quite multicolored I love this picture it's a great one um, really kind of shows what they do and um, gentle carousel miniature therapy horses have their own books as well 
that are for sale on Amazon and um, they've won awards for the books and that's little circus right there so we sure do love that and um, wow look at that giant and uh, and tiny <laughs> it's absolutely phenomenal uh, it's a great program anyway so please come down it's free um, you know there's no charge and this is just a great opportunity for adults and children to interact with horses and, and learn about the importance of reading so it doesn't get much better than that got a cute little um tack room hack for you i can't help but share this because um i was actually at natalie solomon dr natalie solomon's farm a week or so ago and um, was actually out there to make my own cbd um, and flavor it myself and and all of that good stuff and she shared her um, husband is a i don't want to call him a handyman although he is but he's um he's an incredible engineer of brilliant ideas so uh he actually designed in my opinion one of the best tack room hacks i've ever seen and um the wall where the saddles are located actually revolves out into the barn and your um your tack is actually located inside and and then outside and then you can turn it right back in again so when your horse is getting tacked up out in the cross ties and actually we have a video i think um uh, of it and and when your horse is on the cross ties out in the center aisle of the barn your tack is right there without having to take it off the rack carry it out the door and and tack up and then when you're done the door just revolves right back in so that's a great tack room hack in uh my opinion so one of my favorite i've ever seen had to share that with you um the mustangs so we featured quite a few stories on mustangs as i'm a blm mustang owner myself and um there is a an equine collaborative wild horse solutions summit coming up which is aiming to find a way to actually restore usa's beleaguered wild horses and burrows to their appropriate and legal habitats um, presenters are going to include Craig Downer, who's a wildlife ecologist and a longtime advocate for wild horses in the U.S., who has actually um, said that there are scheduled roundups to begin again by helicopter on July 1st, and the need to reform the Wild Horse and Burrow program is urgent. There are 20,000 or so wild horses currently scheduled, apparently, for elimination. So um, something that we really, really need to to work on it's an area of advocacy in the horse world that is so important and key and america's wild horse is in dire straits so this is something that we all as horse people need to address and figure out a way um, to be better so uh something just really to think about look into and you can um you can google all the information there is a recent um movie that came out that we went to watch in wellington um, to a red carpet opening on the um, situation with America's wild horse and certainly something um, that we all can do our part to educate and um, the Mustang Makeover of course is another great program, the tip challenge, there's so many ways that the Mustangs are available but there's adoptions across the country as well where you can actually take one home, I did it, um, quite brave at the time didn't know what I was going to do just fell in love he was on his third strike so um, I took him home and he's an absolutely amazing trail horse a very very kind companion horse he is he loves everybody follows you around the field like a big dog so um, and I'm no expert trainer by any means at all so it's certainly something that anybody can do and they make amazing uh, horses really for any sport that you want to get involved in whether you're just interested in trail riding or um, going on and doing more um, even endurance or anything I, I know people have done eventing on them and all sorts of things so um, a number of different breeds obviously go into those mustangs um, that were were set free over a period of time and have have mixed I've even seen draft horse um, mustangs and and a number of others so Definitely a, a horse you need to look into if you're looking for a wonderful horse. Mine was, as I said, on his third strike. So $25 for an amazing Mustang. So coming back in just a few minutes, we have Dr. Adam Kayot joining us. As I said, we're going to talk a little bit about laminitis, the exam, prognosis, 
and um, something that obviously a lot of us horse people have faced for a variety of reasons as he talks about. So we hope you'll enjoy this segment coming up with Dr. Adam Kayot, Peterson and Smith, Equine Hospital and Complete Care. Stay with us. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to FeedDAC.com. DAC, it makes a world of difference. With over 70 years of collective experience in the horse industry, Lipchip was built with integrity by horsemen for horsemen. Introducing the Chip Link system, powered by Lipchip, where a 15 digit unique ID becomes a key to unlock not only identity, but also health paperwork, owner information, and even photos of each horse. So simple, even a child can do it. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. Enhance your horse's performance fitness, strength, and rehabilitation with state-of-the-art equipment. ETI treadmills offer the finest European engineering, the highest quality filtration, and no chemicals are required. Follow Equine Therapy International on social media or at equinetherapyint.com. Equine Therapy International provides technologically advanced therapy for horses worldwide. Hey, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. I'm Louisa Barton with the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television here at Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care, chatting to Dr. Adam Kayot about laminitis, something that is a big concern in horses. And obviously at this time of year in the summer, as, as thick and green as the grass is, it's something you, you definitely have to be concerned about. And especially with those ponies and miniature horses, you need to be keeping an eye on. So I'm going to talk, first of all, to Dr. Kayot about some of the causes, grass being one, of course, of laminitis, and then how he does an initial exam. Dr. Kayot, thanks for being back with us today. Glad to be here. 
tell us a little bit about laminitis and some of the things that cause it. Obviously, we've mentioned grass already. Right. Um, so laminitis is is a uh, a thorn in our sides as far as veterinarians go um, because we don't really understand everything that causes laminitis or why it happens or the or the physiology behind how it begins and and which is kind of crazy because it's obviously been around forever with with horses but it's a it's obviously a very difficult um, uh, problem to have and, and and it's very difficult to solve. Uh, I always tell people if you ask 10 different veterinarians how to treat laminitis you're going to get 11 different answers and then the reason that is is because there's no one good way to treat it. As far as causes go, um, I say anything that is a stressful event in a horse's life can cause it to be laminitic. Um, so if a horse gets really sick, if a horse has surgery, if a horse, you know, uh, has some kind of uh, bad injury, any of these things can cause uh, laminitis. And then you have the metabolic things where um, if they overeat, you know, sugar um, or they have problems processing sugars. And that's why we talk about this time of year when the grass is coming in down here and it's really green and lush and they're not used to it. It's got a lot of sugar in it. And these horses that have metabolic syndrome can be, uh, they, they don't process those sugars. So it's like overeating a, a grain bin every time they go out into the pasture. Obviously this is a problem. And so if you have this type of horse, um, you obviously have to be aware and, and, and kind of, kind of, I, I always tell the clients during these times of year, be very cautious and, and watch your horse and, and, and limit the amount of time it's been out. As far as examining these horses, I, they're, they're very, most of them are the, are present in the same way. They, they are, they, they don't want to move. They're reluctant to walk forward. Um, they tend to rock back on their hind end to get, um, their, the weight off the front end. Um, certainly, uh, you can see it a lot of times when they are turning, when you go to turn them, they'll really rock back. Cause that, that is, uh, you know, that's particularly painful. And then you might, you might also see um, that they are um, laying down more than they would normally, or they're laying down at a funny time of the day when they usually don't lay down, and that's to get off their feet. So that's the symptom that I generally get called for. Hey, my pony's not, you know, not really to walk. He didn't want to come in from the back corner of the field today. So then I go out and I look at it and I watch how it walks, how it turns, and that basically is a big tip off. Then I confirm that by I generally put hoof testers on so I'll, I'll, I'll put hoof testers on and squeeze around the foot and typically horses that are laminitic are significantly sensitive or that it's, it's painful when I put that hoof tester over the point of the frog and at the toe and and those two things basically are, are uh, the best way to determine can also have an increased pulse but that's pretty subjective some horses have an increased digital pulse so and 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 judging it on a day that I just happened to see it, I don't know what it is before, no, you know, no, normally. So, so that's a pretty subjective uh, uh, thing. So um, that's the way I diagnose it. Um, I don't generally run to um, radiographic uh, changes initially. You don't, generally don't see any initially. Um, it needs to be more of a chronic time frame as far as that goes before you see radiographic changes. But, but the idea with... Um, Laminitis is try to decrease as much inflammation. The lamina are inflamed. They're angry. That inflammation cuts off blood flow to the lamina that are holding the coffin bone to the foot. And those lamina are then trying to die because the blood flow is not, not there. So we try to decrease the inflammation as best we can. All sorts of anti-inflammatories, ice baths, the whole thing. Uh, and, um, you know, and hopefully those horses will improve over time. Sometimes they get better. Most of the time they get better. Sometimes they don't, despite, you know, our best efforts. And, and that's what's so frustrating about this disease is, you know, you can try to treat it and you treat, <laughs> you treat one horse this way and he does great. You treat the other horse the same way and it just, we just keep circling the drain. So that's very frustrating for veterinarians, very frustrating for owners. And um, that's why laminitis is, is such a bear to deal with.
So for treatment choices for inflammation, but banamine, kind of the normal, um, anything additional that you do for them at that point, like in the early stage at least? Right. So um, but surely, surely non-steroidals like but banamine are great. Um, putting, a, a, putting feet in ice, um, ice baths are one of the best things you can do. And horses can stand in ice baths basically 24 hours a day. Um, if you think about horses you know that live in a climate not like ours and but in a snowy climate they can be out and their feet can be in the snow all day long and they don't get frostbite they don't you know they're just fine with that so um they can deal with that well so i i, I recommend ice and then you know i put them on um I'll, I'll run some dmso a lot of times uh in a in acute phase um that's somewhat controversial, but I think it, I think it helps. There's other veterinarians that don't do that, but you know, that's why I preface this by asking 10 different veterinarians, you get 11 different answers. So, so, you know, that's, that's kind of the way it goes. So yeah. It's like asking horse people, 10 yeah. horse people, you get 11 answers too. Now with extreme cases and God forbid we get to that point, but extreme cases where the rotation is very severe, is there anything that you can do for a horse? And can you describe to our listeners what exactly rotation means and kind of what the outcome is of that usually sure so so when i'm talking about rotation the the, the coffin bone is housed in the foot in the hoof cap capsule itself and basically the front of the coffin bone is parallel with that hoof capsule so you'll have you'll have the coffin bone and the hoof basically parallel um and as we get rotation that coffin bone pulls away from parallel of the front of the hoof wall so that coffin bone then is rotating and trying to push down through the bottom of the foot as opposed to sitting on the bottom of the foot like it's supposed to. You can, things you can do about that, you can, um, therapeutic shoeing helps, change the angles, change the support angles and that sort of thing to, to support the foot better. Um, in some extreme cases, we can, you know, there's, there's um, people out there that, that will actually cut the deep digital flexor tendon that's what attaches to the coffin bone and that's the, that's what's responsible for pulling that um you know having that pulling action um i try to go to that um last um that might be a little bit controversial because there are some people that think that that's what you should jump on right at the beginning but i've had several horses that have done that and it's very painful for them so I don't know what's better. Um, you know, I haven't had a lot of success when, when that's been done um, with those horses. So, you know, but it is done. Uh, that's why I say it. And, you know, obviously some horses have responded to it. I just haven't had that luck with it. So. Very good. Dr. Kayot on laminitis here at Peterson Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care. I'm Louisa Barton for the Horse Talk Show. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Peterson and Smith Equine Hospital and Complete Care, and Larson Hay, our broadcast and television sponsor, plus supporting sponsors, DAC Vitamins and Minerals, Seminole Feed Stores, Piranha, TT Distributors, and the Hilton Garden in downtown Louisville. This show is brought to you in part by Seminole Feed Stores, family-owned since 1934. Manufacturing fixed formula horse feeds with mindful monitoring and quality ingredients right here in Ocala in an all-natural, non-medicated feed mill. Seminole Feed, simply the world's best and safest feed. Like them on Facebook now or find them at SeminoleFeed.com.
if you're tired of the rigors of keeping your horse's water troughs clean and free of algae, you need the Drinking Post Waterer, an automatic waterer for horses, livestock and cattle. Field tested for over 40 years, the Drinking Post Waterer is the gold standard of non-electric automatic waterers. Check them out on Facebook or find them on the web at dpwaterer.com. Hi, I'm Louisa Barton here at the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch for the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television. We're chatting with a couple of very important key people here in this program. Uh, here with Dr. John Sweet, the Executive Director, and Brenda Carujo, the Program Coordinator. Going to ask them a little bit about what they do here. We're going to start with Dr. John Sweet. Thank you so much for having us here. It's wonderful to be here. We're actually here because one of our great sponsors, um, Brad Boland from Lipchip, actually came to Lipchip their horses today uh, so they'd be microchipped and safe and have all their health records that they need all in one place. And that's why we're here. So what a great opportunity to have a chance to chat to the staff. Uh, doctor, tell us a little bit about what you do here. Well, we are a 38 bed uh, residential facility for what is termed at risk children. And it is children that have been, have been deemed to be at risk for human trafficking. And so uh, we have children who have been abused, neglected, abandoned, exploited. And uh, we work with them to get them prepared for the next step for them, which is going to be uh, going back to a family member or, or their family or to uh, prepare them for foster care and adoption if that's the route that it takes. And so uh, we're here to just meet every need that they have. And we're excited to be all able to offer the Equin program because it does so much to help the children settle and learn some very important life skills. Horses are the best, the best, best therapy of all, I'm quite sure. Oh yes, it's, it's, it's just an amazing thing to watch the kids, even when we're not doing a program, they'll walk out to the fence. And I particularly remember one day, a young lady had, was going through a very uh, difficult emotional season and she came and she laid her head down on the fence and she was crying and a horse walked up and laid laid his head down right beside her Aww. and it was just you know you have that they have that sense of what's going on and it, it it's a, it's an amazing thing that's incredible brenda you're the program coordinator tell us a little bit about what your role well first of all kind of a bit of your background and then your role here with the, with the kids i am a path um, international instructor equine instructor and i've worked with horses um, and kids with either disabilities or um, trauma before and I'm blessed to be here at the youth ranch because in our equine program we teach them life skills and we teach them to trust again and to self-regulate through learning about their own energy and learn how to read body language so they can prepare themselves when they're going to talk to someone and even communication and um, the horses here are very very calm they they can 
sense what the kids are feeling and they can communicate with the kids. We, I coordinate the program, I do the classes, I'm sure the horses eat and um, we get sponsors and all the help from the community, which, you know, it's a big help and that's basically it. And, and tell us without mentioning any names, obviously, um, a couple of maybe experiences that you've seen with the kids, with the horses and the interaction and, and some of the positive that comes out of that, that, that you've seen. We have a kid that, in addition to having trauma from their ex his experiences, he's also ADD, ADHD, and he's when he came here, he was very nonverbal, and he's been working with one of our horses continuously, and um, he's talking now, and he will talk to Jumbog. It's it's amazing. He will talk to Jumbog like conversations, and we have a photo of one day Jumbog putting his he her head on him like this and he, they were just there they had a moment of communication that has no price like they say and we have had another we had an, we had a, a another kid that she was going through a very difficult time and um, she the first day she went to her horse a, the horse ran away and she asked me why did she run away I said because you have to learn about your body language and your emotions you're very angry and she was able to see. I said, let's meet with her, uh, with the horse tomorrow. And she met with the horse the next day and she came calm and in another mood, in another uh, state of mind. And she was able to see the difference. So she's able to translate that into the people that she deals with. You know, when she goes back to cottage, when she's in school, if she's angry, people will react to that. If she's calm and she can talk clearly, like she did to the horse that day, then people will react to that in a positive way. So those are like very, very clear, you know, um, experiences I've, I've seen with the kids and the horses. That's wonderful. Um, now, as far as horsemanship, do they learn some basic horsemanship skills with you and, and learn how to move around horses and, and how to take care of them? Do they help at all in any feeding or chores? Yeah, our program starts with um, learning observation and observing the horses in the herd, what's safe, what not safe. Safety is very important in, in what we teach. They have to learn how to read if the horse is feeling bad or, or you know, if, if it's something that hurts the horse. Uh, they have to feed the horses. They have to learn the feeding process. That's a most. That's part of the classes. Uh, they learn how to lead the horse as a partner. So not pulling the horse, but working, walking with the horse. It's going to be your partner, communicate with the horse. They have to do it in silence. They have to do it talking. So they learn body language and not talking. And they also learn how to do commands in a gentle way so they can communicate with humans that way. And they are able, if they're interested, to move forward into not only leading, but leading at liberty, which has been done and amazing. And then also riding. And we have basic riding. They can just ride in the round pen with someone or they can learn. And we've had girls that did independent riding and we have clothes donated so they can have the whole nine yards of their riding pants and the boots and the whole thing, you know, the vest and take pictures of them and they feel really good about it. So that is so yeah, wonderful. So and, and what age group are the, are the children? We have from five to 17 or almost 18 when they age out. So we have had, we had one girl here that was tiny and she was like, she was five and she was leading one of the big horses and that horse was just following her instructions through the optical course. It was amazing to see. So we teach the same skills throughout the whole, you know, to all age groups. And we try to talk to the, to the older kids that are like middle school and mainly high school into look, this is like, this is, there's so many careers you can do, even if you're not doing what society calls successful in school, getting all A's and you think you can become a doctor, you can actually work with the horses and there's so many jobs you can actually do. And it encouraged them to see, you know, that there's something else they can be good at. So that's, that's wonderful because we need equine veterinarians yes. badly. <laughs> yes, yes. So maybe you're raising some of them up here. That's yes. wonderful. Um, tell us about your experience with Brad Boland from Lip Chip. I, uh, you reached out to me. I did a post on social media. Jennifer Ireland, who's wonderful, connected us to, to Brad from Lip Chip and, and he got us some blankets for this cold weekend. So I think that's, a, that's an amazing thing. And so just share a little bit about your meeting Brad and, and the Lip Chip connection there. Well, it was a gun 
not sent thing because on Thursday I was kind of desperate and crying about what are we going to do. And then I was at the high school and I texted you and you connected me with Jennifer. And then Jennifer said, you must call Brad. I'm like, okay. So I texted Brad and it's one of these people that are so um, available and, and he was very friendly and connected and interested showing like, okay, I want to help you. What do you need? So we kept t texting back and forth. I need these sizes. How many can you get of these amount of blankets? He's like, yes, yes, just tell me, just tell me, just tell me. What else do you need? So in my experience, it, it was very helpful and very available, like interested, showing me I care. I'm not doing this just for doing it. I'm just, I care for the horses. And I care to help your institution, your organization. So That's wonderful. So they got microchipped. <laughs> yes. And then Friday we're putting the blankets and we're really excited taking pictures and we had the kids helping. And then he texts me, oh, why don't we microchip the horse? I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. We have to wrap it up. I have one last quick question for Dr. John Sweet. What can we do to help you? How can we help you get funds and, and how can we find more information? Well, obviously, you can go to our website. It's uh, www.hofyr.org and uh, see some of the things that we're doing. Uh, but by and large, you know, we need help with our equine program. People can volunteer. Groups can come out and work. They can donate. Uh, just about, you know, any level of uh, involvement that people want to uh, to help with. Wonderful. Well, thank you for having us here. Got to wrap it up. Louisa Barton here at the heart of Florida Youth Ranch. What an incredible place. Uh, if you can donate and help them out, uh, show clothes, finances, volunteer, they would love it. So it's been a great visit. Current equine microchips can migrate by up to 30%, causing difficulty when scanning. With over 70 years of collective horse industry experience, Lipchip offers a new, more effective method of microchipping, partnering with veterinarians and technology experts to ensure humane and practical microchipping. Lipchip was built by horsemen for horsemen. Nowadays, the performance horse industry is in need of both integrity and transparency. Lipchip is the future of horse microchipping, with cutting edge technology functional for every discipline. Find Lipchip on social media and for more information, lipchipllc.com. The future is here. The future is Lipchip. This show is brought to you in part by DAC Vitamins and Minerals of Florida. All horses need a solid immune system, excellent joint support, a healthy gut, and DAC has all the vitamins and minerals they need with the NASC stamp of approval. So like them on Facebook now or go to feeddac.com. Dak, it makes a world of difference. World Class Equine Rehab Promoting Faster Recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy and Underwater Treadmill, a Salt Water Spa, an Aquapacer, Magna Wave, a Vibration Plate Swimming Pool, Massage and Laser Therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. After a terrible vehicle wreck in 2021, breaking my neck from the impact and severely injuring my knee, I was no stranger to PTSD and my huge ugly scar was a constant reminder. Nilam Patel at Nirvana Medical Spa treated my knee with the secret RF, delivering radio frequency energy to all layers of my skin to improve scars and skin quality an easy, safe, effective procedure to revitalize and regenerate the tissue for optimal results. Adding PRP enhanced the procedure. Thank you, Neelam and the team at Nirvana Medical Spa for a better, brighter, and much happier me. The Larson family has been farming hay in Idaho for generations with a mission to always provide high quality hay products at a fair and reasonable price. Larson Hay loves to meet new customers while always honoring the ones they already have. Find Larson Hay on the web at larsonhay.com, like them on Facebook, 
and definitely visit one of their locations. Larson Hay, Idaho's finest alfalfa and our television broadcast sponsor. Welcome back to the Horse Talk Show! You never heard of a talking horse? Well, listen to this! With your host, Louisa Barton! What does it feel like to be in love with a horse? Presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience! Back in the saddle again! Now, here's your pretty, pretty Louisa Barton! You're fab, you're switched on, you're a bit of all right, yes! <laughs> yeah, baby! Yeah. Back on the second half of the Horse Talk Show, presented by Palm Chevrolet, your hometown Chevy experience. Thank you to Larson Farms, our broadcast sponsor, Idaho's finest alfalfa. I'm Louisa Barton in the CEP Equine Studios downtown, and you just got a visit at the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch, and that was pre-recorded a couple months back when um, uh, Brad Boland was here from Lip Chip LLC and took great care of the horses out there, microchipping them. And I had met Brenda Carujo. I did yes. that right, didn't yes. I? Yes, yes. And um, we had a chance to chat, and I learned a lot about the program, and I was so impressed with how much they've done, um, really, with these children that are in the program and how much the horses have helped them. And they have eight horses out there and a phenomenal program. And we've seen through, I think, a number of different programs, everything from gentle carousel miniature therapy horses to the stirrups and strides therapeutic riding program, mm -hmm. how much horses help um, both children and adults in so many ways, how therapeutic they are. I can tell you that five minutes with a horse changes my entire day. So uh, that, Brenda, we... We welcome you back. It's lovely to Thank have you. you here live in the studio Thank with you. us. Thank you for joining us. That interview we did a couple of months ago to come and kind of learn about the program. Get us up to date a little bit on how things are, how the horses are doing, how things are progressing, and then we'll go on to kind of how people can help. Um, we're doing now like a summer program. So we have um, classes early in the morning, so it's not too hot and then late in the evening. Since the kids are, some are in summer school, some are not, we have a bit more flexibility with the schedule, which is really good. We have uh, some kids that are new, so we're starting with the groundwork, and then some kids that are almost horsemen and horsewomen, wow. and we are starting to do some riding early in the morning or late, almost like at seven, and it's exciting for them that they can be out so late, and we're riding in the arena, you know, so it's really good. The horses are doing well. It takes a lot more care because the hot weather, you know, you have to be watching their temperature right, right. and don't feed them too late in the morning, don't feed them too early. Right. So, we featured that last week, talked a yeah. little bit about when to ride and when not to ride and how to know if your horse is too hot. So that's very important. So good point. Um, so tell us these eight horses, um, they've been in the program with the kids. Tell us some of the results that you see from this program. It's a 501c3, the heart of Florida. Yes. And um, there's a number of activities and things on the website. Actually, if you go to the website, you're, you're actually not going directly to the equine program, by the way, just so you know. Um, we were just looking at that. That is not, if you want to make a donation, of course, donations are welcome, but that is not direct to the equine program. So we really want you to get to know Brenda so you can learn about how you can help the horses. But um, tell us a little bit about some of the things you see with the kids in this program. They come, normally during the school year, they come from the schools and they live on property, right? They live on property, yes. Right. yes. So during the summer, they're living on property still. Yes. So the summer program, basically, they're coming out of their housing to the horses. Yes. Yes. Uh, How nice. A, I know. <laughs> I tell them, you guys don't know what it means to have a horse in your house, Amazing. you know? Yes. Yeah. But they don't realize it. But after a while, they really enjoy it. I have one of the girls, I have a good story of one of the girls, that she just came out and she just wanted to hang out with the horses. I said, yeah, no problem. That's going to be your class today. Connection, trust with the horse. And we were talking and all of a sudden she says, you know what? 
I feel so good because I was hungry, angry. I was really mad. And then I walk to the fence and I meet Patches. And then Patches smiles at me. And then Chili smiles at me. And then I feel calm. Yeah. And I tell the horse how I feel. And then I feel calm. It can change my whole day. I can tell you I can be having yes. a rough day or a busy day or an overwhelming day or a day when I just feel like everything is chaotic. I get around a horse, I touch a horse, and it, it changes everything. So I can only imagine how these kids yes. must feel having this opportunity to walk out the door and be greeted by a horse. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. And some of these kids need to speak to someone almost every day because of all the issues they have dealt with before in life. And one of the girls, she was crying. She went to the fence and she was crying, talking to Buddy, another Buddy. of our horses. And don't ask me how it happened. I won't have a scientific explanation to you, but maybe a fly was on Buddy's eye, so he had a tear. Call it a miracle or call it I don't know, but she was crying, telling Buddy how she was feeling because of the situation she was um, dealing with, and Buddy cried with her. And she, the next day, she told her therapist, she told me, she told everybody. He understood me, and he was there for me, and I felt so good afterwards. Oh, I know. okay, now you're going to And make then me you can cry. cry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh. So that's one of my, you know, and that just happened like a week and a half ago. So, so your, your kids are, the, the kids that are in the program are what age? Then? From six, right now we have from six to 17, almost 18, aging out. So here, they're in the process of learning skills that will help them, you know, be able to age out and go into another program. So when they leave the Heart of Florida Youth Ranch equine program, and, and you may be familiar with it under Unbridled Hope, right? Yes. Right. Um, because that's the, the name of the equine program. So if you're familiar with Unbridled Hope, you're familiar with this program. These kids, when they leave the program, let's say they're 18, they age out and they leave the program, do they have good horsemanship skills to go on and maybe work in a farm or a ranch? Because so much here yes. in the horse capital of the world are we in dire need of workforce in yes. the equine world. Yes. So these kids, when they become young adults, have got good horsemanship basic training. Yes, I try to teach them to take care of the horse from feeding them to doctoring, learn what's an abscess, how do you treat an abscess, wrap the horse's foot, mm. uh, unwrap it the next day, bring water to the horse if he's you know, in the smaller area because he, doesn't want, he can't walk so much. If we have to give meds, I teach them how to do it, even though I do it because it's being a med, but I teach them uh, how to do it. And we make lists of everything. What do you think we need? What do you think we need to do? I make them work. We have list. We have um, haltering. They have to learn to halter with both rope halter and the other regular halter. They have to lead. They have to learn safety with the gates. One. You open the gate to the inside or you open the gate to that. What would happen if you do this or that? You know, I make them think Good. and find the solutions for the things themselves. So they really, it becomes a, what do you call it? Memory? A muscle memory. Muscle memory. There you go. <laughs> well done. Do you do so, muscle memory? Because you some it, of yeah. them are interested in becoming vets. So I'm like, it's hard work at bus school, yes. but it will be awesome if you can do it. Yeah. Or I tell them all the things that you could do. So they have a purpose. A lot of these kids don't know that they can actually find a good job because they think they're worthless. And I'm like, you are worth, look at this horse, how much you're helping the horse. Look at the things you're doing. If you know these skills, you can get a job doing this or that. I have one of the kids that are like, well, I'm not good enough. I'm like, well, I don't know, but you could become a farrier because you handle that, those, that horse and, and clean his foot, perfect, like an experienced farrier. Oh, really, Miss Brenda? Okay. And he starts thinking. So I arrange for the day that the farrier comes so he can be there. So he can see, oh, you can be a farrier and you can actually have a car. You know, yeah. oh, you can be a farrier and you can actually have a life. You know, mm -hmm. and farriers work. make a lot of money. So, so <laughs> yeah. I try to encourage them that, you know, these are other options they could do. 
Brenda, we want to put your telephone number up on the screen. Um, also, if you can say it um, for our listeners. That, that It's 352-425-0709. We will appreciate all the donations. You can make a check to the youth ranch, but call me. I will give you all the options and ideas of how you can help us. We need the help. And we're going to look at some options of fostering horses. And yes. there are eight horses. So if you're interested in being a foster parent to one of these horses, we're going to start working on a program with Brenda to help that happen. So if you can foster a horse, you definitely need to reach out. Let's see what we can do to help this program. Yes. Brenda, yes. thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. I'm so impressed. And you brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> we'll be right back. We've thank got some you. more great videos for you on the Horse Talk Show. Stay with us. Thank you to our presenting sponsors of this half of the show, Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay. Also, thank you to our supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, Equine Performance and Innovative Center, and Summit Joint Performance. This hour of the Horse Talk Show is presented by Palm Chevrolet in Ocala, where the entire team is committed to making your experience in sales and service hassle-free and easier than ever with no games or gimmicks. Come in and visit on Southwest College Road or online at palmchevrolet.com. A second-to-none experience with all the amenities. Palm Chevy, find new roads. Nirvana, Ocala's premier medical spa, is leading the way in great skin with all the newest in treatment options, offering prejuvenation for younger clients and rejuvenation for all ages. Nirvana knows you want to look your very best, but we've all seen people with the telltale signs of too much work. We want you to look like you, just better, brighter and younger, with all the newest and best in technology and all in the most beautiful surroundings. Like Nirvana Medical Spa on Facebook and find them on the web at nirvanamedicalspa.com. Become a better, brighter and younger you. Piranha, your trusted leader in insect control for 50 years. The official fly spray for World Equestrian Center. From the strongest water-based equine spray in the blue bottle to the familiar and longtime favorite in the yellow bottle. Wipe and spray, we've got you covered. If you're looking for effective plant-based fly spray, then look for our zero bite in the green bottle. Check us out online at piranhainc.com. That's P-Y-R-A-N-H-A, piranhainc.com, to learn more about Piranha's entire family of products. Piranha, it works. My name is Dr. Natalie Solomon. I formulated Equigreen with cutting edge science and technology alongside the passion that is represented by a lifelong love of horses. I created a product that I would trust for my horses because they deserve nothing but the best for their bodies. Horses rely on us to take care of them, to love them, to respect them. This is how Equigreen came to life. Equigreen, CBD for your horse that you can trust. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. Louisa Barton here for the Horse Talk Show at Grand Spree Farm or also for Equus Television on all smart TVs. I have a special guest here that my friend Jessica has introduced us to and that is Niall Quirk. Can you imagine with the name Niall that he might be an Irishman? He's also an international coach and we're going to chat to him a little bit about his very interesting life because he's done some very interesting things. Niall, thank you for being with us. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. We love the accent, um, absolutely. And it's so funny, when I first moved over here, I didn't hear English and Irish and Scottish accents at all. I only heard American accents. Now, I don't even hear an American accent because I hear it all the time. But then when I'm around somebody, I love it. I could listen to you talk all day. Thank you. Well, I think there's so many of us here now. I mean, Irish people in the horse world. So that's uh, rather cool. There's absolutely lots, and there's a lot in Kentucky in the in the thoroughbred world. I'm yes. surprised going to Lexington to see that. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in the horses, probably as a young man, very young man. Yes, um, I, I, I started riding when I was about um, 10 years old, and um, I worked in a stable, a big livery stable in Ireland, and I was a helper. And I have to stop you right there. Livery. Oh. Tell our listeners what livery is. 
Um, it's where they have borders. <laughs> so a, a livery stable is somewhere that you have borders. So it's a boarding stable. I wonder, we'll have to Google that one and see where that came from. I don't know, but you're right. When you said it, I went, livery, that's right. <laughs> I'm going to mess you up all evening, I think. <laughs> um, so I, I worked there and um, I would, you'd work all day and then they would give you a, a free ride. And so my parents would pay for one lesson a week. Um, so that's how I started really and got the bug and continued riding and I decided I was going to do horses and my father said I couldn't do horses I had to have a proper job and he sent me off to college and I have two degrees um, which I really haven't used I've got a degree, degree in business studies and a degree in um, catering management. Ah. So you can manage a business and cook? Yeah well I, I, I had a restaurant so I've, I've, I've been a chef for 15 years as well as doing horses and then I broke both wrists my head and my leg and so I couldn't work in a kitchen so I went into horses full-time and I've never looked back. So you broke things so you couldn't work in a kitchen so you went on horses instead? Well, It was really funny because I used to go into this this place to teach and I would be on two crutches and my leg was bandaged my arms were bandaged and I had a bandage on my head and I would sit in the corner and teach group lessons of children. They were probably like that's not where we're gonna end up is it? <laughs> Well, I think the parents were more worried than anything else because they would see me in the corner. So you taught um, younger children uh, flat, jumping, yeah. combo, everything? Everything. Yeah, I, I, I was eventing at that stage. So I had, um, I've had event horses. That's why you had a crash on your head. Yes. <laughs> no, I jumped up on, on a horse coming in from a field bareback with a head collar. And then I... So Stop. Head collar. Translate, please, for our listeners, head collar is a, he might not know, <laughs> it's a halter. Oh, halter, yes, a, a halter, sorry. I need okay, a so, he, I know, head collar is a halter for our listeners. Um, so I basically, um, I jumped up in this horse, put my leg across it, and just suddenly realized I had got on the wrong horse coming in from the field, and it bolted and on, onto a road, and I got booked off on a, on a road. Broke my wrists, broke my leg, broke my head. That's no good at all, is no, it? No, we, we, we did a lot of that jumping on bear back to ride up to the 60 acre field. I was at Stonely Abbey with my pony and we used to take the ponies up the road and yes. put them in 60 acre field. And we usually didn't have anything on our head and we should have. And we were bare back with the rope and the, and the head collar. Well, I had, no, I had no hat because I was coming in. This was my own horse, so it wasn't... It wasn't like I was in a stable, belonged to somebody else, so it was fine. But in the old place that I worked, they would you always had to have hats on. Mm -hmm. And you would ride one pony and lead six in from the field. Yes. Mm. Sounds like my childhood. I remember those days. Yes. So eventing. Yes. Um, and, and then what after that? Um, my, good, my good horse, which um, went to uh, three star, four star, well, the new four star, um, he broke. Um, he couldn't jump anymore, so I decided to start doing dressage, and I got hooked. And uh, then I bought myself a, a schoolmaster, a Grand Prix horse, and I started learning dressage. And I was really lucky that I fell into a situation that I met Conrad Schumacher. And I went to, to watch him in Germany, and he invited me to come and stay and train. And that's how it all began, really. I learned how to ride. So a big time mentor for you. Um, yeah, absolutely. He, um, he, he's quite an amazing man. He, uh, I think he understood the whole idea that they, there wasn't a, an education process in a lot of places in Europe and in America. So people, he had to adjust training to let the people learn things that he would have assumed Germans would know. And he's the master of that, I think, really. So you've been in America for what, about five years or so? Um, I, I've been back and forth for about 15 years um, and I've moved here about six years ago yeah and the differences here from home do you see quite a lot other than the pronunciation of words like hunter <laughs> I, I think the biggest difference is that I'd say 50% of my work in Ireland and in England were jumpers um, and here it's either eventers or dressage people and I love teaching the jumpers really love it Fast and fun. 
It's more, um, well, with us in Ireland, you know, I, I ended up working for Show Jumping uh, Ireland and I would go around the country and do clinics every month in the different areas. And um, you saw these amazing, talented kids. You know, they were somewhere between, you know, 12 and 17. And they were just, they had talents like you wouldn't believe, but they had no education or skills. And once you gave them skills and some education, they ran completely ran, but they knew they needed those skills with the new with the new courses, because the new courses are so technical, you can't get around them unless the horse can bend unless they can adjust the stride, unless they can keep the horse sound through working it. It's so true. I was just watching the Grand Prix at, um, at WEC last Saturday, and you want to talk about technical. There was some really, I mean, there was some major bending going on, and, and if you couldn't do it, you didn't have a chance. So you're, you're right. The skills are very important. It's not about just getting on and getting over the jumps. So much more to it. Well, you're 92% of the time you're on the floor. You're only in the air for 8%. So you have to work at the 92% as well. And it, it dictates how well you jump the fence. If you can't come to the fence on a good stride, a stride that you can regulate and control, you're in a problem. And if you can't come out of a turn, maintaining the canter or even gaining canter, you're in problems. Actually, it was quite a few scratches even last Saturday, I think, after some of the riders saw the course because it, it was tough. I mean, it was impressive. Watching the jump off the last few to go, I was wowed by you know some of them cutting some of the corners and uh, it was a really impressive grand prix so something for you to maybe go and watch if you haven't watched it yet at, at WEC. it's pretty uh pretty pretty tough course talk to us a little bit about the dressage uh side of your your training um I, as i say i went to germany it was very privileged that i uh i had one horse when i went and then i bought a second horse while i was there and i stayed i was meant to stay for two months and i ended up staying a year and then for the next five, six years, I went um, back to Germany for three months every year training. So that was great. And it gave you an opportunity to compete there and to meet amazing riders. I mean, uh, there was a huge amount of American riders training there as well as English riders. Niall, we got to take a break. We'll be back with Niall Quirk here at Grand Spree Farm in just a minute. Stay with us on the Horse Talk Show. Thank you to our presenting sponsors of this half of the show, Palm Chevrolet and Larson Hay. Also, thank you to our supporting sponsors, Equine Therapy International, Nirvana Medical Spa, Equine Performance in Innovative Center, and Summit Joint Performance. Hi, I'm Alan Davies with Equine Therapy International. Today, we're at Engineered Equine Performance, celebrating the new saltwater chilled treadmill. This particular chilled equine saltwater treadmill is a game changer. As you can see, the finest materials are used, the filtration system, coarse, fine filtration, no chemicals. We use UV, ozone, combination of the filtration to keep the highest water chemistry standards. Being a saltwater unit, only the finest stainless steel and materials are used. That's important when it comes to longevity and cost of service over the life of the unit. This unit also has integrated massage jets with fine bubbles and coarse air bubbles for the therapy. The control system on this is Siemens industrial grade, top of the line technology, straight from Germany, but also serviceable here in the US. World-class equine rehab promoting faster recovery is available at the Equine Performance Center Ocala. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy and underwater treadmill, a salt water spa, an aqua pacer, magna wave, a vibration plate, swimming pool, massage and laser therapies. With post-surgical care, memberships, packages and BOGOs, EPC delivers a rejuvenated horse through proven and innovative rehab. Like Equine Performance Center now on Facebook and find them on the web at epcrehab.com. This show was brought to you in part by TT Distributors, dedicated to bringing their customers the largest selection of quality horse supplements, products, and farrier supplies in Florida at affordable prices. Also online at ttdistributors.com. This show is brought to you in part by Summit Joint Performance, promoting a healthy, thick synovial fluid, decreasing inflammation in the joints and improving the cushioning properties of the cartilage pads. All age horses can benefit from Summit Joint Performance.
Maria Lacasse of Midnight Rose Equestrian's background is in natural horsemanship and dressage principles with a main focus on maintaining a balance of communication and correct biomechanics between horse and rider. Come to her farm or she'll come to yours. Allow Maria to help you and your horse to unwind and balance to increase performance so that you can both be the best you can be together to build a lifelong partnership of success. Maria Lacasse of Midnight Rose Equestrian is a graduate of the Equine Natural Movement School for Equine Structural Integration and a Florida School of Massage graduate. Find Midnight Rose Equestrian on social media and on the web at midnightroseequestrian.com and book your massage for your horse and you right away. Hi, this is Hall of Fame jockey Mike Smith. We're listening to the Horse Talk Show. I'm Louisa Barton with the Horse Talk Show and Equus Television on all smart TV platforms here at Grand Spree Farm. Visiting with a friend of my friend, Jessica, who said, you need to talk to this guy and have him on your show. Well, we love to have an Irishman on the show just so we can have the accent. Had a little bit of, uh, of um, I should say, Irish banter there as we uh, tell you what some of the words mean. We'll have to have a quiz on this one later. Back with Niall Quirk here, talking a little bit about his career, some of the interesting things he's done. Niall, Jessica sent me this amazing text, and actually I should just read it probably. But anyway, all of the incredible things that you've accomplished, can I ask you to share some of those with us? I mean, Olympic, uh, Olympic students, um, oh my gosh, FEI, uh, World Games, all sorts of things. Can you share some of that with us? That's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, I, I think um, I didn't realize how much stuff I'd done until I actually sat down and wrote it. Um, and somebody asked me for a bio on wh who I was. Um, I've done a huge amount of, um, I've done a lot of conferences for different people. I've done the British Horse Society conference on flat work for jumping. Again, we're into the jumping situation. I've worked for British Show Jumping and I've done their, their, um, their conferences in four different areas in, throughout the UK. Um, I've you know, what's the next one? I, I'm just, it, my head, I forget actually what, half the things I've done, but I think the diversity of what I've done it makes it very interesting in that I've, you know, dressage is the basis, so, but dressage is training. That's all it is. It's a French word meaning training. And I think people get mixed up in the idea. It's the ability to train the horse. And the key to that training is the rider. So I think I make riders and the riders make the horses. Because without the skill from the rider, you cannot ride the horse. So I, I, I think I've learned a huge amount about biomechanics. Um, I became a Pilates teacher, not to teach Pilates, but I wanted to understand the body. Because growing up, we all learned in Ireland and England a lot about the skeletal systems, mm -hmm. you know, the digestive systems, all of this, the musculature, all of that. But I didn't really know how the body works and how it should be able to go into a dressage type posture. I don't like the word position because position infers that you're putting something stationary and locking it. Whereas it's a posture, it's a balance within movement dressage. Well, riding in general, excuse me. Um, so I think, I, I think the amalgamation of the different skills of working with jumpers, um, understanding the body of the rider, um, and working with tremendous trainers. And, and I have worked, uh, you know, I, I worked with the Irish Army for 11 years. I used to teach the Irish Army riders. So they, uh, a lot of them have been to the Olympics, to the World Games, um, which was an amazing experience. And they were, you know, professional riders. So it was fantastic. That sounds like a, a really interesting experience to, to, how do you, what differences are there in preparing them than maybe preparing an, another team or another student when you're working with the army like that? That's pretty interesting. Um, well, uh, traditionally they, 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 don't, they didn't do pure dressage unless it was a means to an end for their eventing. But I think going in, uh, some, the, the head of the Irish equestrian thing, um, called me and he said to me, will you, will you do it? And I said, I'd love to. So I came in and I met the guys who are, 
they, they were already established jumping riders and then some of them would be kind of uh, they were kind of diverted into eventing and of course they didn't know a lot of flat work but they were mad keen because it, their job depends on it because if they don't achieve they're moved to another area of the army so it was fantastic because they are hungry to learn on wonderful horses wonderful wonderful horses yeah, I was going to ask you that. What is their supply for their horses and, and what are the kind of, there must be quite strict qualifications for that for a horse. It, 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 was, uh, it was a little bit silly for a while because they only would let um, them have Irish horses. And of course, <laughs> the Irish horses, uh, well, well the, the original jumping Irish horses were good, but they weren't as athletic as, as the warm bloods. And, um, and they kept breeding the Irish horse plainer and plainer with the draft. So they were losing this athletic ability. And then now they've opened it up to an Irish stud book. So that if the horse is born in Ireland and then it's, you know, it's bred with, uh, you know, say some sort of warm blood semen and an Irish mare or a, a, st a stallion that is based in Ireland, they let that happen. So that changed, I think, a lot of things for them. Oh God, yeah. yeah. And the government gives them a budget that they can buy so many horses a year. That's incredible. So talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, Olympics that of course have got were delayed and everything but sort of changed some things but but at least the those that qualified were, were going ahead and, and we just recently were with one of the uh, Paralympic uh, young ladies very impressive Kayla Van Walt. Um, talk a little bit about Emma Hindel and about your uh, association there and kind of looking forward to the Olympics what you sort of see with that and especially with her obviously. Um, I, I met Emma when I was in Schumacher's. She was there. She was there for seven years, eight years. Um, she had previously been with um, Kira Kirkland for, I think, four or five years. And uh, she, she didn't work with Schumacher per se. She worked with um, Schumacher's writer, who was, um, her name has just gone completely out of my head. I'm which is I'm a, not the only one that has to. Uh, um, <laughs> Ellen Boncha. Ellen Boncha, who, who had got a silver medal in the Olympics for Holland. But um, I met her then and we became great friends and she diverted herself into different parts of the world and I did what I did. And uh, then literally about four years ago, she said to me, will you come and teach me? Um, so I, I, I thought she was joking first as a joke. You know, we, had, we were having a few glasses of whatever we were drinking. <laughs> and being Irish, I don't drink, obviously. <laughs> And she's English, so she obviously does. Not really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but she said that would I come? And I, so I came. And um, I went to her twice a month from, from the US. She flew me to England twice a month. Um, and her horses, we, we did really well. She got up to 74 on her mare. Her mare was very hot. I mean, if the mare was level in her head, she was on a very big score in the late 70s. If the mare was silly. I mean, she could get 68, which is very depressing because and the, the Emma is an amazing rider. Like the Germans rate her. I've stood beside German, the top German riders, and I heard them talk about her. Um, but she is an amazing rider. But her horses are both um, out, so she can't go to Tokyo. So she was, she was working toward Tokyo um, and to get that place on the elusive team, the British team. But um, at the moment, because of COVID, I think that she's, she's quietened down and she's young horses. I mean, young horses that are pre St. George, but they're not young, but they're not a uh, Grand Prix. So she's, I think, looking for a Grand Prix horse. Wonderful. So um, looking at, at the Irish uh, for the Olympics, are you, are you happy with, with, uh, with the Olympics, with the, with the um, riders? Well, and, and, and associations with any of them or familiarity? I, I would know them all. I mean, I'm talking about the dressage ones. So this was the first time ever they had a team. And it was a big deal. They had qualified a team. And that, they would have all been fine and sound last year, but two of the horses are out now. So they lost their team place. But there's a girl in Ireland called Heike Holstein. Her mother was uh, an FEIO judge. Um, so uh, she was German and she moved to Ireland and she trained her the her Heike herself and her brother to jump and her brother went to the world equestrian games and Heike has been to the olympics i think twice um and so she's got the individual place which was today they've just announced it today which is great news oh, fantastic. fantastic and she's produced the horse herself and it was homebred in ireland even, even better 
Uh, we got to wrap up this segment. Um, we'll be coming back in just a moment with a little more with Niall on the Horse Talk Show. Stay with us. That's it. Wrapping up the Horse Talk Show for this week. It flew by. Thank you, Brenda, for being you're with welcome. us. Whether you're in the horse capital of the world or not, happy horsing around till the same time next week. <laughs>